This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. So, very nice to be here. I'm Mark Epstein. Um, I understand this is part of a series that Bob is doing, which sounds to me like an extraordinary series. Maybe most of you have been to all of them or some of them? That, yeah? So you're lucky, because he's amazing. Um, he asked me to do tonight on the Satipatthana Sutra. Satipatthana Sutra, this is the best book about it. Um, I'll get into it what, it, what it is, what it means, what it doesn't mean, but it's about mindfulness. So um, he, he thinks I understand something about mindfulness, which um, I might or might not, but I'll try to communicate what I think about mindfulness um, this evening. For, is the sound all right? Okay. And what I'm thinking tonight is like, I'm going to talk and read you a bunch of things and um, and then I'd like to meditate a little bit uh, and, the, and do some questions. So uh, you can feel free if you have questions as I'm talking to interrupt me, but I'll also make time, you know, hopefully enough time or a lot of time if there, is, if there are questions. So don't sit on it if, you, if, uh, if you're wanting to say anything or ask anything, okay? Um, for those of you who don't know me or aren't familiar with my work, I'm, I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, mostly what I do is psychotherapy. Uh, I can prescribe medicines because I went to medical school. Um, but I, I came into being a therapist uh, from a rather unusual place, at least uh, it's not as unusual these days, it was more unusual then, in that I uh, discovered Buddhism uh, before I really knew very much about anything else. Uh, when I was in college, just randomly taking classes, uh, I took an introduction to world religion class in my uh, first year in college and something about the Buddhist uh, uh, psychology spoke to me right away and I, through various quirks of fate I came upon people, uh, the psychologist Daniel Goleman who went on to become the psychology writer for the New York Times and then he wrote a book called Emotional Intelligence. He was a graduate student in psychology when I was an undergraduate and he had already been in India uh, when I took, you know, came into his classroom and I could tell mostly by the purple bell-bottom pants that he was wearing <laughs> at the time that he knew something that I wanted to know and I made friends with him and he suggested that I go out to Boulder, Colorado which was the beginning of Naropa Institute uh, which was like a Buddhist summer camp in the mid-70s and I met um, uh, Joseph Goldstein and Jack Kornfield and uh, um, Ram Das, various people from that world, who were all just back from India and beginning to teach what's become known as mindfulness or, or Vipassana um, uh, over the past 40 years. But I was w one of their early American students. They, J Joseph Goldstein, Jack Kornfield had already been in Asia uh, for much of the 10 years previously. So I was kind of the next generation coming, coming up. Uh, but I, I was drawn to them. I traveled in, uh, in Asia with them. Come in, come in. Um, and uh, I, was, I was lucky enough to begin a kind of, uh, for me, what was an intensive uh, training in meditation um, in those years before I went to medical school, before I trained as a psychiatrist. Uh, before I did my residency, before I started my, my own psychotherapy practice. So I was always looking at the Western psychoanalytic tradition and the Western psychiatry tradition through the eyes of what I had learned um, from my Buddhist teachers um, because that was really you, you know, how I first started thinking about the mind and about psychology and about myself, really. Um, so sometime into my psychiatric training, I started writing a little bit, uh, basically trying to put the ideas of, uh, you know, the Buddhist idea of the self and the Western idea of the self, the, the Buddhist notion of the ego, 
and the Western notion of the ego, the Buddhist notion of attachment and the Western notion of attachment, the Buddhist take on desire and the psychoanalytic take on desire. And I was just trying to uh, uh, explain for myself or reconcile for myself or try to understand what I understood. And, and that was my, you know, that, be, that turned into writing a number of books that uh, some of you might have, have come upon in your own e uh, explorations. So uh, I think Bob wanted me to talk in particular about mindfulness and Vipassana and, and how it relates to therapy uh, because uh, although over the years I've taught with Bob and, and had a lot to do with the Tibetan tradition, really my own um, uh, exploration and meditation practice such as it's been uh, has always been under the umbrella of the Theravada uh, 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 Vipassana mindfulness people. So uh, it, from the Tibetan point of view, those practices are kind of the foundational practices. They're like the introductory practices, the beginning practices. Uh, if you talk to the uh, uh, mindfulness Vipassana Theravada teachers, they would of course debate that and say, we, you know, we're, we're a full path um, and every, we know everything the Tibetans know, we know. And that whole debate is maybe interesting. For some people, it's not that interesting to me um, because I've just always been trying to take what was useful for myself from whatever tradition I could find. And um, I've enjoyed over the years teaching with Bob because I always come from this uh, therapy, mindfulness, uh, you know, uh, Vipassana place. But um, uh, I, bouncing those concepts off of uh, someone like him who's so skilled as I think if you stay with his series you'll see him expand and expand and expand um, in his description of what's really in the Buddhist tradition and uh, I really trust his take on all the concepts so um, uh, it's, it's been very helpful for me as I try to understand what the Buddhist teachers that I've studied with have taught me uh, it's that what I'm saying will make a little more sense I think as I keep going Thanks for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe to support the ongoing work of Tibet House US. Tashi Delek.